Welcome back to the Jester's Court Podcast. On this episode, we take a deep, unbiased dive into the bipolar biography of one of the biggest biotech behemoths of modern times. The bittersweet background of their bewildering, bloated, somewhat backwards, and at times brutal business practices show us the mind-boggling, if not straight mind-blowing bullshit of bogus bureaucracy. Beware of what you might learn as we boldly pull back the big curtain of Bayer AG. You can't handle the truth! You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. If we're going to talk about Star Wars, we might as well invite Darth Vader. Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Are you a lizard person? Louis? But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. You really are crazy. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Yes. Guten, Guten Morgan. Uh, we're, we're doing the bear thing, so I figured I'd go German. Oh, well, Guten Gherkin to you as well. <laughs> good pickle to you as well. Thank you. Good, good pickle. Good. It's no, like, das ist a Guten Gherkin. <laughs> guten Gherkin. <laughs> On my hamburger. Yes. Yeah. Sweet. Yep. What's up? You What's mean up, your, beyond, your awesome burger? Beyond burger? Yeah, is that how is it like yeah, it's like fo Ferger, right? Fer f Foger? Ferger? Yeah. Fergers. Know, mm, can I have a cheese Ferger? I'm not I'm not on board with that. I don't know. I'd give it a try. I just haven't oh, like yeah, consciously gone and done it. Um because like all the major chains are starting to like carry them now, right? Yeah, I think so. Ultimate burger or wonder burger or Ultimate f- awesome, awesome wonder. burger. Like why all the names? Why all the like epic- Tan- tantric Ish. orgasm burger? Yeah, like basically you'll have a meat gasm in your mouth for lengths of time. I feel like all those names are overcompensating for something. Yeah, right. Can't this just be like this is a reasonable substitute for meat burger? <laughs> yes, this is a, a, a an acceptable name acceptable it, burger substitute. Burger. Name it like an off-brand cereal. Yeah, like you know? this is this is not quite meat burger, or this is like. For meat burger, you know, Fleet. like like a golden oat O's that you get at Aldi, or like, and then there's like the honey golden oat O's. <laughs> yeah, and there's like uh, not just a clever brand name. with raisins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is brand cereal called raisins because it's made in Mexico. Right, right, right. It's yeah. like um, cinnamon bread crunch. <laughs> 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 yeah toast toasted wheat checks with cinnamon right and sugar goodness 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 yeah um admiral crunch <laughs> <laughs> now it would just be like ad admiral like adam and then apostrophe <laughs> with an rl admiral admiral, admiral crunch crunch <laughs> crunch uh, oh shoot! Off brand, yeah, dude. They're, it's all made in the same factories. Do you say "oh shoot" Aquaman? Oh shoot, Aquaman. Aquaman. This just got really awkward, man. <laughs> awkward man. <laughs> we should make that. Would should... be JB in the Aquaman suit. <laughs> awkward man. We should totally do that, dude. That there's a meme there. I dude, swear. I need to. I need to full on Photoshop that. Make that happen. You all in Photoshop. Maybe I should do like a Reddit, like a Photoshop thing. Like, hey, make me look like Aquaman, and I'll call it Aquaman. Yeah, dude. Somebody, one of you listeners out there, do one it. Of the... I'll send you a picture of my large framed person. Yes, JB will send you a picture of his octopus head. You oct what? I don't know. You said large brain. That made me think large no, head framed. Oh. I just figured octopuses have big heads. Well, they do. Speaking I mean, of which, when did they change it from octopi to octopuses? Uh, because the uh, American Association for Pies and Custards got really mad at them. 
Oh, fucking big pie. Yeah, big pie. Big. big and we're not dessert. talking about we're not talking about three point one four pie. We're talking no. about the uh, the delectable, delicious uh, desserts that are made with uh, crusts and fruit fillings. Yeah, for sure, um, dude. Which, believe me, I don't. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not up with big pie. You know, putting putting too much sugar in there, getting everybody diabetes. You down with PIE? I'm down. With- yeah, you know me. <laughs> yeah, you know me. <laughs> wow, we're intellectual this morning. Uh, we're always intellectual. Duh. As fuck. Yep. Intellectual AF. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 so yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So what's new, man? You you had a, a busy weekend. You got some. Yeah, it's family in town. We has my kids' uh, birthdays, and we oh, uh, hung. Tell me more about trampoline parks. Oh my gosh! Dun dun dun! So I am <laughs> so sore right now. So sore, <laughs> like my entire body. I was I actually made a meme and sent it to everybody. I was like a dude in a full body cast, and it was like, "How you feel after you take the kids to the trampoline park?" And jump That's around amazing. like you're an excited 15 year old for two hours. It was I, I had so much fun. Uh, there's one here in Nashville called Altitude. Shout out uh, if you want to get shout a out to year. Altitude. Um, but they so on. This was on. Do Monday. they just play that fucking uh, the Van Halen song "Jump" over and over and over, over again? and over again the whole, the entire time? Yeah. Um, and then uh, so that on Monday or on weekdays they have this thing called Toddler Time. So it's like. Uh, 295. Well, my son still two, was till technically two, so he was free. Um, but we had like a six year old and then four adults. Wait, doesn't and, he, doesn't he what, turn three in like a day or something? Yeah, tomorrow. Ah, nice. um, but so it was two and under free, and then it was 295 for the for the uh, uh, adults. For the guardians, quote unquote. So it was like, like two dollars and ninety five cents. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh Jesus! For for from ten to one. So I'm like three hours. Holy crap, that's great. You know, like if I yeah, that's a that's a very affordable. Like actually, during the prime hours, it can get pretty expensive. It was like sixteen bucks to be in there. But uh, dude, it was so much fun. There was like there was like a little mini this is ninja. An economically reasonable fun time. That's right. There was like this ninja ninja course, like. Uh, what yeah, like, you see? like American Ninja American Warrior. American Ninja Warrior. Yeah. And you're like over a foam pit. And there was like the little ramp thing that you have to like run up and jump. Like it like kind of ramps up straight and then you have to grab on and pull yourself up. Uh, By the was, way, I'm going to have that yeah, fucking song on. stuck in my head all day long. The what? I'm going to have that fucking song stuck in my head yeah, all you are. day long. Of course you are. Mm-hmm. There was like trampoline dunk stations, like basketball dunking. There was a trampoline uh, extreme, uh, what do you call it? Dodgeball arena um there was like one of those like uh tight walking pugilist things where you like hit each other with with battering rams standing on top of a tight oh, yeah, rope dude. kind of thing or uh that does sound like a lot of fun it dude I it's so say. much fun and then there was yeah. like the big like circus tramp trampolines where you could like jump super high and like try to jump up to this wall you know that you see those videos of the guys like jumping off and doing the flips and then jumping back up to the station they were on like eight feet up yeah yeah and then, yeah there was all kinds of stuff, and it's it's fun for the entire family. Oh, great. <laughs> but I'm sore, dude. Like every muscle in my body is like yelling at me, going, "What the hell, dude?" Well, it's. I feel like it's one of those exercises where you actually do exert a lot of energy and use a lot of muscles. Oh but yeah, all the stabilizer muscles. It's like so muscles. much fun, and I feel like the trampoline kind of removes some of the. Like you don't notice how like how much you're doing or how how hard it's kind of like swimming where you're mm-hmm. floating so you're not really like yeah. you're not really feeling the weight of your body you're but floating you're still in, the, in the water a of, utilizing a lot of different muscles that you don't usually do right and the What's, water's cool so you're not getting like hot or sweaty if even if you are yeah. exerting yourself well I believe me the first ten minutes like my lungs were burning and I was sweating uncontrollably <laughs> but. Uh, the what sucks too is when you're like jumping, you're like, "Woo, I'm going all high," and then you jump and start walking on on hard ground. And you're like, "Wow, this sucks." <laughs> yeah, it's like you're still, yeah, you're still like you're, you know minimal input and large output from the springs from the trampoline. I'm like, ah, oh, and then getting in out of a foam pit uh, is not fun at all. Is that like a like a pit with a bunch of like pieces of foam? Yeah, it's like they're like six or eight inch cubes. Oh, okay. And it's like it's a four foot, four foot deep 
pit. So it's like a pool full of fucking. Yeah, foam and, and cubes. that's sitting that's sitting on top of kind of a trampoline type material too. So when you jump in, you can see the whole thing kind of go woo, but it's super. Oh, it, that's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. There's like it's so much fun. So if there's one in your area, I definitely guarantee. Even if you don't have kids, Ooh. just go. It's a good date place, you know. If you don't mind Tim, being just sweaty, go by yourself. Sweaty and awkward um, in front of people. If you go I'm by yourself, go. go like early in the day when there's not a lot of people there. Because <laughs> otherwise, I'll, I'll just seem really creepy. <laughs> no, you just walk and be like, hey, I'm training for the Olympics. I'm training for the trampoline gymnast. No, no, there was like, there was, there was actually a couple of uh, small, like, teenage girls that with their coaches slash dads i don't know that we're like doing oh uh, all right uh, so there's rock and jump san diego there's uptown jungle fun park and there's sky zone trampoline park yeah the first or the the last one of those i think would probably be your winner because i think that jungle thing is maybe have like a ropes course too or something like that i don't know i don't know i have mm-hmm. i've not been to anyone this was just this is called altitude so i'm sure there's a ton of different franchises that altitude. do the same thing so uh but awesome 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 time can't can't uh i was literally like oh my god i gotta keep going back i was doing like flips into the pu- the foam pit and yeah it was cool maybe i'll maybe we'll put up uh some uh video i have some video we'll put up on the website or something like that or at least find some stills and put a picture on our instagram there you go dun, dun, dun. although we don't really have an instagram yet because this is uh maybe. by the time this episode comes out we might yes <laughs> <laughs> oh shit super cool um so yeah dude what about you cool. what's new what's new no not much just fucking work uh, work 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 Mucho and Trabajo. i have just been in fucking uh continuously binging hot ones oh the, the youtube series but i can't stop watching it i uh i have yet to uh i've yet to dip in yet oh you haven't watched any of it no, I haven't watched any of it. Dude, I don't like, I mean, I don't want to say I don't have time, but I just, it's, there's, Dude, that's, n- a cool that's thing, not though. on the my episodes high episodes are somewhere list. between like 10 and 30 minutes. So just oh, like, really? yeah, so watch a short one. Yeah. But see, that's what podcasts are for, because I can do it while I'm. Well, I know, I know. While I'm doing other things. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not like super productive or anything, but. Yeah, so hot ones. But it's 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 good. It's it's. Have, you, have we talked about hot ones yet on this? Uh, I don't think so. For the listeners, describe what hot ones is. So hot ones is a YouTube show. It's on a channel uh, called First We Feast. They have a couple different shows, or not a couple. They have a few different shows on there, and it's basically this dude Sean Evans interviewing celebrities while they eat ten hot wings. And each hot wing has a different hot sauce on it. And they get progressively hotter starting around like sriracha hot somewhere around, you know, sub 1000 yeah, Scoville not units. Super hot. Right, right, right. And throughout the seasons, they've kind of they, they change sauces every season. But uh, after they, may, the first they maintain weeks, kind of a Scoville unit stepping system. Well, yeah, but it's gotten a lot worse because for a while, I think they're hottest. Flipping hot, hilarious. Kind of. Yeah. And so like they they have actually started they've actually teamed up with some different uh, like people who make sauces or make actually make peppers. Um, so they uh, they have a sauce that has a couple of different versions. But a few seasons ago, they they made this sauce their last sauce. and. He's the guy who invented the Carolina Reaper, which Ooh. for a long time was the hottest pepper in the world. How many Scoville it's units? Somewhere around uh, slightly shy of 2 million. So in uh, for comparison for everybody, uh, what's so a, a jalapeno? jalapeno, I think, is like 800. Okay, so, you know, you could get a jalapeno town, but two, 2 million Scoville units, that's just like instant yeah, pepper. Yeah, I think a habanero, melts. which most people would think is pretty hot is like 80,000 man um yeah after so anyways after like 100,000 you just start having like you know hot well it's interesting man cuz there's two ways to make hot sauce like you can use the actual peppers cuz pe- like a, the a good pepper which i don't think jalapeno is but like a habanero i think is a good pepper cuz it has a lot of good flavor mm-hmm. but it's also hot as fuck yeah so if you use the actual pepper then you get flavor and heat um 
but a lot of a lot of the sauces that are more like novelty, like just like that you would buy just to I don't know, yeah, at an party airport tricks. or a mall, like yeah, yeah. yeah so a lot of these like a lot of the fucking ridiculously hot hot sauces, they just use the extract. Yeah. So at that point, you just get fucking heat with no flavor. Huh. Okay, so I guess a, uh, a habanero has between a hundred thousand. And three hundred and fifty thousand Scoville units. Okay, so still way shout, way short uh, of a uh, million. Some people are probably familiar with a ghost pepper. Boo! And the ghost pepper has, I think, a million roughly. Okay. Um, and then so anyway, so Carolina Reaper has it's probably about twice as hot as man ish, twice as hot ish as a ghost pepper. It was kind of the, the new hot thing <laughs> pun. Um, and uh. Anyways, the same guy invented this new pepper called Pepper X, and apparently it has like it's twice as hot as a fucking uh, Carolina Reaper. Like, at what point are these going to start like offing people? Like, okay, this is too hot, my body's shutting down. See ya. Um, so there's an episode on there with uh, Adam Richman. You remember the guy that did? Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Man, versus, Man versus, food. versus food. Yeah. He was telling a story how one of his challenges early on um, was a, a hot wing challenge, and these oh, guys like had a Quaker steak and lube or something like that. I think I yeah, remember prob- this. So they had a uh, a bottle of ghost pepper extract. So just Ugh. the fucking basically fucking pepper spray. The capsaicin, so, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they they dumped a whole bottle on the bowl of wings, and oh. I think he I think he finished it, but I, I think he had to go to the hospital. Like he almost died. Like I was gonna say, like when your stomach start to like bleed and like your esophagus uh. just like you know. Well, his like his tongue swelled up and he could barely breathe and he was like in the fetal position. Yeah, that sounds um, like a sounds like a fun challenge for what yeah. your photo on a wall and a t shirt. <laughs> so yeah, at what point I don't know, man. Um but anyways, the point of that, so this guy who invented Pepper X, he they teamed with him, he made a a sauce that's like uh uh a little over two million scoble units called the last dab. So that's where the show ends, so that's the last wing. So yeah. the cool thing is by the time you get to the sort of like hotter Hot sauces, so kind of like the back half, like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stuff to get stuff gets pretty gnarly, but it's kind of cool because you know these the, these celebrities. And he asks the questions he asks are amazing. Their research is on point, so the interviews are actually really good. And then by the time people start to get kind of uncomfortable, I feel like they're more genuine than you'd see them on like colbert or fucking yeah Jimmy oh Fallon. yeah they're not as rehearsed because they have like you know their brain is melting well from... they're in survival mode and they're not yeah. like, straight <laughs> like yeah <laughs> it's all it almost sounds like a form of like military torture like i mean it's, it could who be, do you yeah. work for one wing <laughs> the last wing is like uh you know where are the weapons of mass destruction they're like they're over there they're over there oh uh, just get out that up <laughs> oh yeah who was it i think it was wanda sykes she's like oh my god she's like now i get why you guys do this she's like i i i'll tell you whatever she's like i'll just i'm gonna start i'm gonna start uh i'm just gonna start uh admitting to things i didn't even do she's like yeah i fucked kevin hart <laughs> <laughs> it's like what <laughs> what yeah uh, it's, it's, anyways, funny. it's a fun. It's a fun show. It's kind of a well, cool show. I'm, I might have to uh, to just yeah. I mean, there's there's like eight seasons, so you got a lot of a lot oh, of options. Wow. Okay, so just sweet. go find go find people that you like. Um, the Aubrey Plaza episode is really funny. She's hilarious. She she ends up she snorts milk. What? Oh, because <laughs> that's what uh, diffuses the heat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's. Uh, I think at some point it's whatever. Like. <laughs> I think it helps a little bit, but what's Fire once you're once you're face. yeah once you're in the fucking zone like once you're in the fucking war zone I don't think I I don't even think milk is gonna do much. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, dude. So, do you it. think do you think Bear ever made a hot sauce? Well, they they uh they did uh they did make mustard gas for the Germans in Ooh, uh, that World sounds War delicious. One. Which is interesting because apparently, and I, I don't know, um, I know this from a while back, apparently the process of making mustard and the process of making mustard gas are the same process. It just has to do with however long you, whatever you do to it. I don't know. I, I don't know the research. Really? So mustard gas is actually like made with mustard seeds? Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Uh-huh. Delicious. That'd be funny if like, you know, 
<laughs> you go to gas somebody and like the acquisitions guy for the army like read mustard and like didn't see gas. So like, you know, you go to gas whoever and it's just the soldiers dumping mustard on the Yeah, on the so enemy. the like yeah, so the fucking the smoke bomb or whatever that you throw out just yeah, just, just blows up and like French's yellow mustard just like sprays dude. everywhere. The kids come running up with like hot dogs. They're like, "Oh, hey, thanks, America." Um, that might be a good. That might be a good little uh, little video you could make. Yeah, mustard gas. French's. <laughs> French's mustard gas. <laughs> French's mustard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Or like a an aerosol mustard. <laughs> That sounds horrible, that you, dude. That you put on your hot dogs is like sunscreen. That sounds awful. <laughs> it's like spray sunscreen, but it's a hot, it's mustard. You, yeah, it's, I think I think we have a million dollar idea here. I think so too, man. Yeah, you could just spray it. You know, in case you want to taste or smell like mustard. I mean, Appar- apparently mustard's an amazing sunscreen too. Really? No. Oh. No. Okay. <laughs> I thought, I thought, uh, was apparently mustard has a bunch of what is it vitamin potassium maybe I think it's potassium yeah well and it's it's an excellent uh, condiment for those who are uh, looking for flavor and not a lot of calories or carbs or anything I mean it's like it's like the go to condiment for people in keto yeah. and keto and stuff like that you know I don't really li- I don't really like your standard yellow mustard really but I don't love it no I don't um, mind it I think it's really good on a corn dog. <laughs> Yeah, it's all right. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I put so, uh, but no, but like that, that like deli mustard or like the, you know, yeah, the, the you brownish, like the you like the, the stuff with ones. the mustard, peppercorns, and the yeah, and with the all the fucking shit in there, and, and yeah, uh, what do you call it, horseradish, and yeah, Ooh, I love horseradish, dude. I would just chew on a horseradish root. So, yeah, I think we were attempting to do a transition there. Um, yeah, you know, just like everything else we do, it's a train wreck. But Yeah, you know, so... Um, the uh, So, previously, previously on... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Go um, for it. No. You can do the previously because you have probably a better, more concise Gosh, uh, dude, no, version. We've covered, we've covered so goddamn much. Yeah, so much. Started. So, this is kind of the third Lord of the Rings film here. Where this probably episode will be a little bit more juicy, a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, scandalous. We're talking about like reparations and payouts mm. and the evil stuff that the company has done and and yeah, hidden and all this stuff. And and then we're just it's just gonna be gone like Kaiser Sose. Yeah. Then boom, gone. done. And then and then we'll leave you to your uh, to your own research and uh, we'll or you could just you. not keep going and you know. There you go. I mean we've. We have covered a lot. So Bear, like any other major, you know, multi-billion dollar corporation, uh, they're out to make money, obviously, but they, uh, you know, have introduced a number of really uh, sort of benchmark products for the world, aspirin, and uh, what are a couple of the other ones, Tim? Uh, phenobarbital. Phenobarbital, which you probably don't know, but you've probably... Apparently it's a great drug with. for epilepsy. Epilepsy. Um, and uh, a little drug called heroin that apparently used oh. to be a pharmaceutical, a non-addictive yeah. uh, uh, substitute for morphine. <laughs> yeah, that, that good job, they really, good job, guys. They really, they really did their uh, nailed it right. Yeah, hit it out of the park with that yeah. one. Um, they're they're uh, they were a chemical co- or they are a chemical company too, and they've made uh, uh, stuff like Roundup, uh, where glyphosate based herbicides. Mm-hmm. Uh, Incest sites. <laughs> we really need to turn that into something. I know. A meme, a shirt, know. something. <laughs> so if you didn't listen to the last episode, in my uh, amazing linguistic skills, I misread insecticide and came up as incesticide, which we then turned into a product to where if you have incestual siblings, you could spray it on them after hitting them with a... I mean, a, or a non-siblings, just if you just happen to see some people that may be related... Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. And yeah, in some way related. We, we don't need to get into it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. Uh, Incest is you, best. If you can't keep it in your pants, keep it in your family. Yeah, sponsored <laughs> by Game of Thrones and Boardwalk Empire. <laughs> or the Royals or, you know, whoever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. Oh, man. Oh, man. 
Well, hey, uh, keep, so, it, keep it, keep the bloodline going. So moving yeah. On so uh, as you can imagine, a company that has all these different products, some of which are controversial, they have encountered quite a bit of litigation. And yeah, covered. There's going to be some bit. collateral damage, and there's yeah, this, we've covered a, a little like bit. Going to leave a large wake. Yeah. So um, one of the things JB just mentioned was Roundup, which is a, it's a glyphosate glyphosate based uh weed killer well and, and this is this is this was after because roundup was a monsanto company so and exactly we so they they, was they acquired they acquired this this fucking shit storm but i mean they already knew about it when this their acquisition happened so it is what it is so in 2018 uh two months after their acquisition of monsanto uh, a U.S. jury ordered Monsanto to pay 289 or Monsanto, which was already Bayer at the time, uh, $289 million to a school groundskeeper who claimed that his non-Hodgkin's lymphoma was caused by regularly using Roundup. Um, and uh, when this happened, Bayer's stock price actually dropped by like 14%. Which is fourteen kind of billion in mar- market cap. That's fourteen crazy. billion in market cap. Uh, and I think their mar- I think we last episode we covered this. I think their mar- market cap was somewhere around sixty five billion. So yeah, I mean that's a pretty big hit, dude. Well, si- sixty five billion was the the number of the acquisition uh, that they bought Monsanto for. That is correct. Yeah, six, sixty five or sixty six. So I can imagine yeah. I can imagine their actual market cap being almost twice that, right? I mean, if you think about it. Uh, yeah, I think that and I think the numbers I was looking at were from like 2017, so it was actually oh, gotcha. before that. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't, doesn't it really I mean, doesn't it's matter. a huge yeah. goddamn company. I mean, it's, we're talking it's about... It's billions, so I'm not, you know... <laughs> yeah, so they filed an appeal, uh, but that was one of 87,000 similar lawsuits. Ah, uh-huh, the natives so the were general restless consensus, and came with pitchforks, huh? Apparently, dude. Yeah, I mean, if you, <laughs> I'm sure you guys have probably heard about this because yeah, it's, yeah, round it's up not big. been quiet. Uh, general consensus among national regulatory agencies and the European Union is that labeled usage of the herbicide poses no carcinogenic or genotoxic risk to humans. That's a um, label usage, though. Labeled usage. So that's, of course, that's the you know description that Bayer wants you to. Well, they're but as we've covered, do they're really good at this shit? I know. Uh, so in 2019, so like recently, a U.S. Superior Court judge, and this is uh, you probably heard about this. Uh, ordered Bayer to pay more than $2.5 billion in damages to a couple in California. And apparently they were awarded uh, $1.37 and $1.18 Damn. Uh, billion, respectively. Respect. That's a lot of money. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the damages were uh, as know. far as as far as physical, if they both had like cancer or something like that, which is unspeakably terrible. Um, but... Holy crap. I mean, think about that. Like almost one and a half billion a piece per person. Yeah. It's, like that's it's, a lot. That's a lot of money. It's insane. And how that wasn't like, you know, divided up into a big group of people. You always hear about these settlements where like the company, you know, here's here's a billion dollars. Give it to, you know, 200,000 people or whatever, you know. Right. Right. Well, I mean, they've, they've, they've definitely done that as well. Man. Well, um, and then... uh so another example of some of this litigation was a, a drug called Zorelto, which I'm sure you've seen on the TVs with all these drug commercials and stuff like that. Uh, Bear and Johnson & Johnson, who uh, marketed Zorelto together, settled around 25,000 lawsuits on the blood thinning drug Zorelto by agreeing to distribute... Here's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Just, uh, excuse me. Agreeing to distribute $775 million to federal and state plaintiffs who said the company had not properly warned patients about possibly fatally bleeding as a result of ingesting the drug. So, like, oh, I took the pill. Oh, my God, my blood's falling out of my nail cuticles. No, not really, but if you cut yourself, because Zorelt is a blood thinner for people with high yeah. blood pressure. dude. Um, and again, there was no admission of liability from the companies in the settlement as they noted they had prevailed in six previous trials. It's fucking crazy. So, basically, um, it's just like, here's money. We didn't do anything wrong. Exactly. Uh, another notable one was uh, One a Day Vitamins. In 2019, a federal jury in San Francisco actually sided with Bayer in a $600 million class action suit alleging that the company misinformed consumers by promoting its One a Day Vitamins as supporting cardiac health, vigorous immune system, vigorous immune systems, and boosting user energy. 
Uh, the jury found that plaintiffs failed to prove that Bayer misrepresented its one-a-day claims, and they did not demonstrate that any of the class representatives' consumers who purchased one-a-day relied on the so-called false information as part of their buying decision. So, they well, actually- yeah, it. You've read a you've read a pill bottle. You know that these people put yeah. on the back. There is no. This hasn't been you know. Uh, checked out by the FDA and this is not used to treat any disease. So it's like, this seems like kind of a frivolous one to me. I mean, yeah, this one, I'm this trying one to defend is... bear, but no, it's but like, this, you know, this, no, didn't, but they... this didn't make me, this didn't boost my immune system or give me vigorous energy. I want $600 million. <laughs> yeah. It's, I agree. It's kind of bullshit. <laughs> well, no, you don't know. You don't have to stand up for bear because they have plenty of bad shit that they have done. I, the cardiac is... health thing I could see though. Like, eh. But still, I mean, ask your doctor, and if you if you're like if he says yes, take one a day, and it'll help your heart better. Like, the, but that's a whole different thing. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a fuck, it's a fucking vitamin, dude. Yeah, they're and, good and, to take, and who's to say like, that the marketing agency that Bear, well, they probably have their own marketing department, but uh, yeah, Bear Business Services. <laughs> that's right. We went through that. Well, well. So yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much their major litigation. That's stuff. yeah, that's a, I'm sure that's a small port. Well, obviously, there's you know you reread well, that there's like twenty or eighty seven hundred similar lawsuits for Roundup. Yeah, I mean for sure, dude. These are just kind of the broad uh, broad strokes um, examples of um, you know people who have not been happy with the company and I want money. Well, and considering this one day thing happened in 2019, I'm guessing you had a uh, you know some fucking law firm that saw blood in the water and they were like, Oh, we can go after them for this too. Oh yeah. Kind of, uh, well with the combined, uh, you know, forces of Monsanto and bear. Now it's like David going up against Goliath, but you know, exactly. It's kind of a frightening acquisition to be perfectly honest. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, Monsanto was kind of the American bear and a little bit. Yeah. You know, minus the like, minus the drugs. Yeah, the uh, the drugs and stuff like that. But uh, you know, Monsanto has done a ton, a ton of research on seeds and chemicals. And I mean, mm-hmm. they're they're world they're a, they're a worldwide company as well. Honestly, they have you know uh, offices and plants in in a ton of countries. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure, man. So yeah, now they're so, now Bear is the big overlord of chemicals and seeds and drugs and stuff. So that pretty much brings us to the end of our Bayer story. So now what I kind of wanted to do was just kind of go back and let's kind of cover the best. Let's wrap it up. Let's have our final, not really final thoughts, but. This will be a long final thoughts. This is a summation of. I wanted to just kind of, now that we've sort of told the whole story and the story was, you know, seeded and laced with, uh, you know, lots of different atrocities. So was it laced with heroin? <laughs> it was laced with heroin and it was seeded uh, with GMOs. Um, whoa. <laughs> so, whoa. Uh, so, yeah, so I've just figured uh, we'd kind of wrap this up by just kind of uh, going back and summarizing some of their major atrocities. You want to just flip flop on these, dude? Sure. Um, so you mentioned laced with heroin, so uh, go for it. Dude, so bear... Created heroin, but have done a great job of sweeping under the rug. Uh, they went. They want everyone to know that they created aspirin, but actually pushing the aspirin in exchange for pushing heroin at the time due to profits. Heroin was invented by a scientist who did nothing with it. Then, twenty three years later, a Bayer scientist created created it. "Quote unquote." He was instructed to turn morphine into codeine. Whoa! What kind of alchemy is that? Uh, something less potent than morphine, and instead he created something roughly two times more potent and dangerous. Man, this is like a plot of a horror movie. Or like, oh, you know, I'm a chemist in France, and I, you know, carbonated bubbles, now I made champagne. All right, cool. Um, they lost the patent on it. Um, uh, what, as sell as Aspen? After World War I and the Treaty of Versailles in 1919, heroin made illegal in the U.S. in 1924. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. But, you know, for a good 12 years or whatever, they marketed the hell out of it as a legitimate drug. Yeah, just, I mean, this, I, this is why there are uh, regulations. Mm-hmm. I mean, the food and drug, whatever, FDA or whoever does. Yeah, I guess it would be the FDA, right? Uh, uh Yeah. Because, you know, you get some, and I, I get it, they were they had 
they had, you know, intentions were to, I guess, help people not feel pain. That's, I, that's totally cool. And that's a good thing, but it's like, come on, do a little more research here. That's where the downside of, of the whole, you know, capitalist thing comes in. It's like, well, we got to make profits. We got to make profits. It's like, okay, well, let's just, you know, what started as something that was supposed to help people didn't really. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So yeah, so I mean, spe- uh, and the and the guy who uh, allegedly created heroin for Bayer, I think his name was uh, his name was Felix Hoffman. So that same guy. Um, so apparently, he he has he gets credit as well as Bayer for uh, creating aspirin, uh, but it was actually developed in 1853 by a guy named Charles Frederick Gearhart. Um, so I guess Gearhart created and didn't do anything with it. And we talked about this in a, in a previous episode, but he, he created it and didn't really do anything with it. And I don't know which company he worked for or if he even worked for a company. And then I get allegedly Felix Hoffman and he was Bear, one of Bear's like major scientists. So allegedly he recreated it from scratch without stealing Gearhart's whatever. Hmm. But it's the, the, the proof on that is a little bit shaky. Uh, but allegedly, he kind of created the same drug, but he he made it uh, a little bit safer and less bitter. But again, real shaky. Yeah. So Bayer may have just stolen the aspirin. Well, we're, uh, that, allegedly, we're not saying that happened, but the proof no, no, is no, in so the uh, is in the pudding here. You know, it, it looks kind of shady here. It's like, oh well, yeah, yeah, we're talking old about old Gerhard. Yeah. Okay. Who? What? Well, All we're right, talking about right, you know. Feel- we're talking about records from the fucking late 1800s. So it's yeah, hard to tell. absolutely. Well, and the next comes the great phenol plot. This but one's it, interesting because that either sounds like a uh, yeah, whatever. Keep going. Sorry, what'd you say? Well, I was gonna say this one's really interesting because it involves uh, what's his name, fucking uh, Thomas Edison. Uh, Thomas Edison. Who's yeah, just a fucking. Notorious asshole. By 1915, Bayer had lost the trademark on aspirin in England and other countries, and England banned most German products. Gee, I wonder why. They were not only losing market share, but also having trouble keeping up with production. One of the main products, phenol, was also needed for explosives they were making in Germany. Hmm, That sounds like a good thing to put into your body. Right. Uh, To bomb and kill their enemies, including the U.S. and United Kingdom. They had lost a lot of business in the U.S., but couldn't import phenol from Germany so they needed to find it somewhere else. The plot thickens, uh, but basically involved a shell corporation buying phenol from Thomas Edison, who had created a factory to manufacture it exclusive, not exclusively for Bear, but mainly for Bear. Yeah, all the, see. the details on this are, are, are a little bit uh, hard to find, but... Yeah, the plan was outed by a Secret Service agent, and it ruined their reputation. They created a slew of other shell companies to try and avoid losing their U.S. business in the, uh, if the U.S. entered World War I. The U.S. did enter... Uh, the war. What's up? That was supposed to say war. Yeah, so I declared, they declared war in Germany. Bayer switched control to another company that was still controlled by the German conglomerate. Uh, but they were still found out, and the U.S. seized their holdings... And everything else, which they did not regain until 1994, it's which crazy. is when yeah they got the the thing back for uh, trademark back for yeah Aspen. they were just they were just trying to play like three card Monty, yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, so speaking of World War One, um, another interesting fact is that they manufactured some of the most dangerous gases during World War One. If you don't know anything about like gases during World War One, um, I think mostly sick shit, dude. Mostly because of the Germans, but yeah, gases including mustard gas, chlorine gas, and a bunch of other shit was heavily By used. By gases, World- we're talking about chemical weapons here. This chemical is, weapons, yeah. yeah. Literally fucking gas and fuel. So it was so bad that literally, uh, I don't know if it was, I don't know what treaty or fucking world meeting it was, but after World War I, basically all the countries decided, hey, like, no matter what's going on, when there's a war, like, no more gases. When was the Geneva Convention? Up. I don't know, man. Uh, I was just but something that. like that, you know. Like, hey, if if we're gonna go to war, there's got to be some rules here because this chemical weapon shit is just too much, right? Um, serious international development produced number of agreements, blah blah blah. Uh, but when was it? 
Did you see originated in 1864. Okay. They were significantly, oh, and were significantly updated in 1949 after World War II. So, yeah, I don't know if it was, I don't know if the Geneva, I don't know if it had something to do with the Geneva Convention or if it was just. No, let's but see. anyways, yeah, I mean, so yeah. Carl Deisberg. Uh, yeah, so I mean, some of the, this was it was just horrible. So, um, and and Bayer was a huge fucking part of that. So basically, near the start of World War One, a guy named Carl Deus Deusberg. I'm just gonna call him Deusberg. Um, <laughs> so Carl Deusberg was the Bayer chairman, and he was one of three men commissioned by the Ministry of War in Germany with finding a use for some of the poisonous byproducts from the chemicals they manufactured. Ugh. The team recommended the use of chlorine gas on the front lines. Um, and Duschberg was even like present for the first use of chlorine gas against people. Hmm. And if you don't know anything about chlorine gas, like it's fucking horrible. Mm, yeah. Um, then it, I, mean, I mean, you start to suffocate and then you die. Hmm. Uh, so they laid <laughs> Right. And the funny thing is, is, dude, this is kind of like similar to the whole like fluoride thing, because apparently chlorine gas was just some fucking gas they had on hand because it was a byproduct of one of the other chemicals that they were manufacturing. Hmm. So he's like, wow, he can get rid of this and yeah, isn't, isn't sell it to the fucking fluoride military. a byproduct of like aluminum manufacturing or something, something like, that? like that? Yeah, we can do another another episode on that. Um so after after they, you know, the the military commissioned the use of the chlorine gas from Bayer, then they also manufactured uh something called phosgene gas. I could be pronouncing that wrong, and mustard gas. And we meant that was what we were talking about earlier. So basically over 60,000 people were killed from these gases during the war, which likely could not have happened. This was World War 1. Bayer. Yeah, this is World War 1. Yeah. So this is back in like the early early 1900s. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, moving on to World War II. Fucking horrible. Our good friends at IG Farben, uh, they, were, they were one of the uh, first companies that bankrolled the Nazi party and their war efforts. They held 40% of the company that manufactured Zyklon B, which was another, uh, another gas. interesting gas used. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zyklon what did they JB use Zyklon is what B happens for, after JB? I go on. Uh, what's up? So what did they use Zyklon B for? Uh, that was what they uh, used to kill people in the gas chambers at Auschwitz, which mm. was uh, one of the most prolific, uh, yeah, places where they took uh, Jewish people during World War II, what they call those concentration camps. Yep. So that was uh, that was not. I, I I hesitate when I say this stuff because it's just like hard to take in. It's like yeah, this this company was sitting there making this stuff, knowing that it went to kill tons and tons of people. So. Uh, Mengele, Joseph Mengele, this guy is a character. Mm. I say that very, very meanly. Um, his, uh, his family makes tractors, though. Do they? Yeah, Mengele is one of the biggest like tractor manufacturers in Europe, I think. No way. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's called well, Mengele and Sons. During, during the war, he was the man who did a lot of genetic testing on people, mainly with Dude, the twins. He was uh, like, he was like the quintessential, like, Benchmark. Mad, he um, was a mad scientist, basically. Exactly. I was, I was, he was just like, say, anything dude, you would like, see where somebody's like, there's a basement full of body parts, that was basically Joseph, Joseph Mengele's MO there. Granted, again, I'm not justifying any of his actions, but the way they thought about it is they were doing genetic testing to make a greater race. I'm not saying that that's justified at all. But, yeah, but he was just one of the people who clearly uh, had some fucked up tendencies. Dude. And he took full advantage of the no, opportunity. No consciousness. Holy crap, dude. Could you imagine? Fuck. Like the morals, the lack of morals. Again, it's a it's a different I don't I can't put myself in their shoes. I mean, I can try and understand it, but it's like fucked up. Um thinking that well, I mean like, they had a lot of positions, you know, employed in these these camps and shit and I'm sure some of them were just, you know, fucking going along to get along or getting along to go along or whatever, how the, however that fucking saying goes. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tow the company line so that the company doesn't run over me with a train. Yeah. Yeah, but he was someone who was just, I mean, dude, he would have become, it he probably like would have become a, a weird. Into it. He would have been probably a weird show killer if he didn't have this opportunity to right? kind of yeah. utilize his uh, fucked up uh, Skills, yeah, that's the right word. Well, yeah. and and so he had a a huge. I don't want to say crop, but he had a huge 
base of people to to experiment on because the Germans were bringing yeah. up Jews and putting them in concentration camps. So they would they would purchase uh, Holocaust victims and experiment on them and use them for slave labor in their factories. And it was just like Jesus, like it's hard to talk about. Yeah, um, it's hard to wrap your head around, dude. Well, and they, uh, you know, all this stuff that they were doing killed all these people. I mean, it was like, they yeah. were just, they were just expendable. So it's like, ah, uh, man. Yeah. I mean, they killed the uh, somewhere around what, 6 million Jews. Yeah. Something like that. It's, it's a lot of people. It's insane. Uh, yeah. Fritz, Fritz Termier, uh, was convicted and sentenced at Nuremberg, uh, then made head of the supervisory board of the company after his release. So he went to trial for war crimes and I think he did. How many? He did only did a couple of years, right? I think they sentenced him to seven, and I think he did two. From yeah, and then gathered. they're like, "Well, come on, come on back, Fritz. We have, we have a position for you. Come on back. We have um, a corner office for you." And then they publicly try, tried to distance themselves from the World War II atrocities of I.B. Farben, but really didn't one bit. Uh, that's where marketing comes in, and you know, pushing and different good. names and different. Uh, the octopus of corporate structuring. Mm-hmm. Um, each tentacle uh, leads back to its, you know. Roots. Yeah, but they're good with their tentacles. You know, it was funny. I was, I was thinking. I was, I was listening to something else, like a different podcast, and they were talking about, you know, should the kids be uh, held accountable? Is the, is oh, the, the you know, the do you sins hold of the, the father? Yeah, the sins of the father, and it's yeah. like. I, I I get it. A corporation is not a, a person or a family, but it's I, I, that's where I'm torn. Like, do you hold modern day bear accountable for what World War II bear did? God, they just keep fucking shit up, though, dude. And that's the thing is that yeah, it's not it's not a generational thing. This is a company. That, like, if all this that, stuff in world like the World War One and World War Two stuff is fucking horrible, but if it ended there, like that'd be one thing, but it doesn't. Yeah, and if they went into like you know planting trees and building wells for orphans in Africa, you yeah, know, like, I don't know, man. Maybe maybe there would be a different. It's just hard to it's hard to think that you know that they've they've gone all altruistic and and, and yeah. helping you know. Um, I don't know. I, I I try and I try and be fair and I try to approach everything with a with a pretty level head, um, and and you know that's why I'm always kind of doing the devil's advocate thing. I mean, granted, killing. <laughs> thousands and, and and millions of people I'm not saying that they did that but they were part of you know a small por- portion of that large portion of that uh, I try I even try and, and look at it as, as a, in a from a broader picture logically and it just doesn't it doesn't add up you know no no I mean so like I mean even just what it, that was you know fuck what we're talking about World War two so you know fast forward like 40 years and uh I'm just going to I'm just going to go I'm going to throw some clickbait out there. Bayer gave people AIDS allegedly. <laughs> um so we talked about this earlier parentheses but, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. They manufactured the factor 8 and factor 9 um drug which was for blood clotting and hemophiliacs. Uh and to make this drug they used donated blood which was used in the early 80s. So during the beginning of the AIDS epidemic the US banned the use of blood donated from prisoners, IV drug users and homosexual men. There was also some sterilization practices involving, I think, heating the blood that were in place. Um, However, Bayer ignored all of these laws and ended up giving the treatment to thousands of hemophiliacs tainted with AIDS. Because the the genius thing they did was they took the samples that they had, all of the donated blood, and uh, they mixed it all together. So even if only a few of those samples were tainted with something, it got into everything. So... um, because they pulled those samples, I mean, way more, way more drugs were infected with AIDS than just the number of donors that had it. Um, and a drug that was supposed to save people's lives ended up killing thousands of people. I guess in 1985, the CDC found that 74% of the people who took the drug were infected with HIV. Man. Um, and just to make matters worse, they continued to market and sell the untreated blood drugs, the tainted version outside the U.S., and they said it was due to certain countries being suspicious of the effectiveness of the new version of the drug. The post, like, after the heat treatment and sterilization. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, uh, this whole sterilized version of this drug, I don't know about that. So, yeah, that one, uh, that one's rough. 
Jeez. And uh, <laughs> crazy. Well, they were actually convicted of Medicaid fraud. This is not necessarily allegedly. This is convicted. Uh, yeah. Companies have to price their drugs to uh, Medicaid at the lowest price. And if Medicaid they- is uh, it's what the the medical health insurance uh, in America for poor people. Yeah, it's the yeah, it's so yeah, that, yeah. yeah for sure. Uh, if they start selling it to a private company for less than that rate, they need to notify Medicaid and reduce the rate. They ignored this when uh, brokering a deal with Kaiser for the drug Cipro to avoid losing their contract to the Johnson & Johnson equivalent. They rebranded the drug and gave it a different ID number to avoid being caught, then did it again with their blood pressure meds. They were caught and maintained they, didn't not, they did not break the law, but uh, pled out and paid over $250 million to the U.S. government. Uh, well, at least you got deep pockets. If you got deep pockets, you can do anything wrong, right? That's crazy, dude. Yeah. Uh, Bayer still has a patent on aspirin in many countries. They lost their patent and trademark on aspirin in the UK. Obviously, went over this. Uh, yeah. US, UK, and France, over 150 years later, they still maintain their patent and trademark on aspirin in Canada and Mexico. This wasn't a part of the uh, convicted of Medicaid, was it? No. That's okay. all right, though. Keep going. Yeah. Uh, over 150 years later, they still maintain their patent and trademark on aspirin in Canada and Mexico, Germany, Switzerland, and over 75 other countries. Uh, Pure Food and Drug Act mandate that doctors use the generic name in literature and prescriptions, etc. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, Mm -hmm. Bayer purposely made the generic name extremely difficult. (laughs) Check this out. It is monoacetic acid, ester of salicylic acid. Dude. Why why would they... How would why you be would able to read that? that if a doctor wrote it on a on a, on a pad? Like I can't Fuck even no, read like dude. a doctor's name when they write it on a pad. Yeah, so they did that on purpose so that doctors would just keep writing for aspirin. Yeah, write it for aspirin because it's easy, huh? Uh huh. Wow, that's fucked up. It's crazy. Shamala- this is the Shamalama Ding Dong Expialidocious. Pretty much, <laughs> dude. So, um, so that being said. They and this one is this one. There's no proof of this one. This one this is, is very, a very, uh, well, very big. Allegedly, it's a total conspiracy, but I think it's interesting. So I threw it in here. Um, they're accused of spreading the Spanish flu, which if you know anything about the Spanish flu, I believe it uh, killed like what? 19, like 19 million people or something. It, yeah, killed it was like it was like fucking, an actual like percentage of the po- world's population. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and this was, I think, back in like the early uh, 1900s. So this one, like like we said, is a huge conspiracy. There's no actual proof. But uh, at the time, aspirin was being used as a treatment. Um, they, I don't think they understood a lot of anything back then as far as like medications and, and ailments because they were using as they were prescribing aspirin for people with like uh, like pneumonia and tuberculosis and shit. So uh, aspirin was being used as a treatment for the Spanish flu, um, and it was maybe more for the symptoms than the sickness, but, I mean, it is what it is. So it has been speculated that many deaths, this is, I guess it's not so much that they spread the Spanish flu, but maybe that a lot of the people they that did died from the Spanish it. flu. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, I guess it's been speculated that many deaths were actually from aspirin overdose. As the drug was so new at the time and doctors did not know exactly how to control dosage and no one really knew what the signs of aspirin poisoning looked like. So I guess this one's more that like. Well, again, this is this some is of those you would all figure out in uh, j- uh, drug testing. Mm hmm. You know, if they had they probably didn't have it. back. Well, that's then, what I, that, that, again, that's my point is that doesn't mean it, really it, it may be chronological. The fact that they didn't just didn't have the technology back then to do drug testing. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I mean, I still think they should have done more due diligence. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I, I completely agree. And that's mm-hmm. that's 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 where we kind of, you know, where I'm, I'm looking at it. And it's like, you know, how, well, I mean, you don't just get to be a multinational corporation by being perfect. You know, there's a lot of, you know, failure and obviously uh, trial and error and stuff like that. But... <laughs> But the, the, but a big but. There's a lot of I don't know stuff that I don't like talking about because it's maniacal and uh, yeah seems when seeming I, um, to be nefarious and and all this stuff. So I mean I, I I get it. We're not trying to say that you know all corporations 
should be good. I mean, look at the the history of countries and stuff like that. It's it's all part. It's being. You, you, you know, it's not, not everything can be, you know, bunnies and roses and stuff like that. No, for sure. But at the same time, um, like there's gotta be, I don't know, some sort of uh, well, you don't have to be that bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at least, at least feel sorry for what you've done. I, I yeah. would have, I would imagine oh, and admit it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but so Tim, after doing, uh, all the research here, um, what's your, uh, what's your take? And, and for being German, you're German. And um, I'm German. Yeah. My take is, uh, I mean, they did similar things to a lot of other companies. Um, you know, they were entrenched. They were a big, uh, they were a big part of, you know, the, the, the makeup and probably the, the the revenue and and everything of of Germany in a time when Germany did some seriously stupid shit, but and they did they've done some good things they've created some drugs that have helped people out and saved lives and stuff, but man this is a fucking dark ass company. Well, I, it's um, it's hard to find the numbers on the good that they've done in, in, in hard numbers and like, Oh, you know, aspirin has saved. So, and it probably has aspirin. I, I mean, maybe there has been, maybe there are some statistics out there of, you know, uh, people taking baby aspirin that have saved, yeah, you know, saved them mean, from having a heart attack. We're not trying maybe, to smear the company here. We're just no. trying to bring the, the stuff that they're trying to suppress to the light. So you can make a better decision on whether or not you want to use the products that, you know, just it's basically having a more informed decision, yeah, I mean, my um, just a better me personally, base. like, if I'm gonna go buy a product and I, I see a, something that's made by Bear, I'm probably gonna go for the other one. At this point, yeah. But uh, I don't know, man. I was I was interested in this topic. Um, I knew that they 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 did some. I knew that there was some crazy shit in their history. I I did not expect to. I didn't expect this topic to be this dark. To be perfectly honest, yeah. It went uh it went way deeper than I would have expected. I mean, I didn't I did not know that we would, you know, when I when we first started doing the research, I didn't know that we'd be talking about fucking Nazis and Holocaust and gassing people in the front lines of World War One and, and giving people AIDS. I mean, um all allegedly, of course. Yeah. Well, some allegedly. But yeah, so yeah, I mean pretty pretty dark, dude. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, I, I my take on it, 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 what's conspiracy and what's not. I mean, it, it doesn't really apply, I guess, because I mean, some of the stuff is alleged, but I mean, it's all pretty much. Uh, I mean, everything we brought up is 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 a pub- public record. So. Yeah, and like 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 I said earlier, with a company like this, the company this big, you know, it's going to leave a pretty pretty big wake, uh, yeah. and that wake may overturn boats and uh, capsize smaller boats and kill people. You know. Um, yeah, so dude. it's, uh, it's, it's hard. I, again, I try and try and stay down the middle. Uh, it's just, there's this big, <laughs> big looming shit storm off to one side that, it, that it's hard to ignore. Um, I'm with you there, man. Yeah. So, uh, again, we're not, we're not trying to, uh, to, you know, sway your opinion in one way or the other. I mean, do your own research. Um, but, uh, this has been the, uh, the three parter of, uh, the company of Bea. Oh, Bea A G. Yeah, uh, uh, animal gastronomics <laughs> and uh, creators of incesticides. Yes. Oh wait, no, that's that's us. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> At Bear, we create spray that keeps your relatives from sleeping with each other. Ew, <laughs> gross. <laughs> Brought to you by Game of Thrones and Boardwalk, Am- Boardwalk Empire. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry if you actually got this far. <laughs> I'm surprised, to be perfectly and, uh, honest. Yeah, yeah, there's like the one dude. It's like uh, Lee from Tenacious D. We have the one fan. It's like, yeah, this is awesome. It's probably your mom. Um, you know, so Drew Frick, thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> so I like how we said we weren't going to, you know, that we weren't going to go do three hour episodes like uh, those conspiracy guys. And then we went and did a three parter on Bayer, which equals about three hours. Well, but we did three one hour episodes. So. That's true. And honestly, that true. the actual meat of the thing is probably about 35 minutes a piece. So, you know, it's it's maybe an hour and a half, two hours tops. Good point. Of, Good of, point. of, of, of meat on the bone. So 
Oh, we could have gone deeper, but I mean, I think uh, yeah, nah, nah. We, we, we gave you we gave you the facts. If you want to go deeper, go do the research. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty much. And hit man. us up. Let us know what you think. Uh, please uh, comment or however you do it: Facebook, Instagram. Um, yeah, and uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts or like, topics share. that you'd want to hear us. Uh, oh yeah, uh, completely yeah, sure. mangle. Um, mangle. Uh, yeah, completely mangle. Um, yeah. <laughs> which would be if it were two topics, we would uh, experiment on both of them in different ways to make sure. Well, that we, the topics we would experiment were, on one, leave the other one as a control, and then we'd kill them both to do the go. autopsy yeah. and fucking do the. <laughs> this didn't out. work. Off us your heads. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> and it was and it was said just like that because if you're speaking German, you're angry. Right, right, right. Well, yeah. and he was maybe just angry because he had to he had to drive tractors when he was a kid. I don't know. Yeah, and if he spoke English, he'd be like, "Hi, Tim. How are you today?" <laughs> right. Fuck. I am very fond of you. <laughs> yes. Sweet. Well, on that note, uh, insert conspiracy catchphrase. Oh, we, here. If we need to come up with those. Fuck. I know. Well, yes. If the foo shits. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I'm just run, running through stuff. Does a bear shit in the woods and wipe does, his ass with a fuzzy white bunny? Does the pope shit in the woods? Yeah. Does the pope wear a hat? <laughs> does the bear wear a funny white hat? The bear? Yeah. The bear shit in the woods? That, have you ever heard no, of the, you fucked up the those? The bear. Whoa. Does a bear shit in the woods? Maybe they, well, obviously ass. they do. I mean, I'm sure with some, a fuzzy white I'm bunny. Sure an empo- employee of bear has shit in the woods at one point <laughs> or another. <laughs> Must have. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, I think that's all we got. So, yeah. Thank so you. So we'll stop rambling. Thanks for and, sticking uh, around. Go enjoy the rest of your days. And uh, show. we'll uh, talk to you soon. Appreciate you guys listening. Again. All right. Bon Bye. giorno.